All right, so now we move on to lesson 5.2, part two, which is rationalizing a binomial denominator. Now, we've talked about rationalizing denominators that are monomial denominators, and we simply just took the same radical and multiplied it to the numerator denominator, and by doing so, we we're able to rationalize the denominator. In this situation, again, we want to rationalize, but now what we have to use is this idea of a conjugate. Now, in the previous lesson, or part one, we discussed what conjugates are, and we kind of did a couple examples of them, but let's just do a quick refresh here. Right at the very top, if we take a conjugate, a conjugate simply means that we take the exact same terms and we put a plus and minus between them, or they are of opposing signs. So what you should do in your notes is highlight this, and then what we're going to do is just draw an arrow to our negative, put an arrow here, and I should just backpedal that just a little bit just so that it doesn't point directly there. There we go. And then I'm going to draw the second arrow going to the positive here. There we go. And this is just to emphasize that there's that difference between the positive and negative, but the terms themselves in the binomials are the same. Now, above this, we want to eventually simplify this and, you know, we can multiply this out to give us what the simplified form is, but let's just expand this all and then collect the like terms. If we expand this doing simple uh, expansion or simple FOIL method, I'm going to go root A times root A. And from our previous lesson, we know that that is equal to just simply A. Because any square root times square root with the same radicand underneath will get rid of the square root and just leave us with the term. So we're going to get root A. Then we're going to take root A and multiply it to B, which will give us plus square root of A plus B, or sorry, A times B. Then we're going to go to our negative B and multiply it to negative root A, which will give us negative square root of A and B. And then lastly, we're going to multiply our B terms together, or the negative root B times positive root B, and this is going to end up just giving me B, because again, if it's a square root times a square root, and the radicands are the same, the value is just the value, or the value is just the radicand position. Okay, now from here, we see that these middle terms, the root A and B, are the same terms, just opposite sign. Well, that's exactly what a difference of squares does. A difference of squares, or when you rationalize these radical uh, situations, where we have a binomial that includes radicals, it will get rid of the middle term and leave the outside terms. So therefore, our simplified solution is A, minus, or A plus B, not A minus B. And actually, we should have a minus here. Let's just be very careful with this because we know that a positive times a negative is a negative, so I should have a negative here. Therefore, the simplified form is a minus b that we'll put in here. Okay, now that we know a conjugate, or more importantly, a conjugate binomial, will reduce the middle terms to zero and just leave us with the outside terms, this will help us rationalize denominators that include binomials. Now, let's see a couple examples here. So first and foremost, if we want to do the conjugate of the denominator here, which is 1 minus root 3, then we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by instead of 1 minus root 3, it's 1 plus root 3. Okay, now we multiply in the numerator and denominator. When we multiply this, it's going to be 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3. There we go, and I just don't want to leave a gap on the 2 there. Now this is going to be divided by... If we know that the middle term goes away, let's use our shortcut and say we're going to multiply 1 times 1, which will give us 1, and then we're going to subtract away the value of 3. Now, how do we know this is 3? Because we take root, negative root 3 times positive root 3, and that will end up giving us negative 3. Okay, now we're going to simplify this, and we're going to write this as equal to 2 plus 2 divided by 3 all over negative 2, because 1 minus 3. Now we go back to our all or nothing principle and we say, well, if all three of these can divide, so these front terms, if they all divide, then we can divide all of them. In this case, they do. And you know what? More importantly, they all divide by negative two to get rid of the negative that's in the denominator as well. That means I'm going to flip the signs in the numerator. So two divided by negative two is negative one. And then positive two divided by negative two is negative root three. There's our answer here. So this would represent the final solution where we've now reduced everything by negative two. And if we needed to, we could even just put that off to the side of we divided everything by the negative two, not just positive two. Excellent. Okay, let's do this again with part B. So we go over to our second uh, fraction here and we see that there's a radical in the denominator, which means it's irrational. To rationalize it, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate. So 3 root 5, instead of minus 4, it's going to be plus 4 because we just take the exact opposite sign and make it positive. Now I'm going to multiply this. 2 times 3 is positive 6, root 5. And then 2 times 4 is 8, 
in the denominator, because it's the conjugate, we're going to take our outside terms or our first terms and multiply them. This is going to be 9 times 5 because we get rid of the radical on root 5 times root 5. And then we're going to take our last terms, negative 4 and positive 4, and multiply them. And this will give us negative 16. Now, again, the reason that we can just do our outside terms on this one is because these are conjugates of each other, meaning the middle term would be an added and a subtracted version of the same term. And therefore, we can write this as equal to 6 root 5 plus 8 all divided by 9 times 5 is 45, 45 minus 16. We should end up getting that this is 21 in this sense. So 45 minus the uh, 16 that we have from here we're going to get that it is, oh, not 21, but 29. There we go. Always better to just double check. Okay. So 45 minus 16, we get 29. Because 29 is actually an irrational number, therefore, this is actually the solution here. We can't reduce this anymore. If 29 can only divide by itself for one, meaning, and not an irrational number, but a prime number, if 29 is a prime number, we know it divides by itself for one, and therefore, there's nothing else we can do with this. The all or nothing principle doesn't apply here. Okay, so those are some warm-up examples. Now, suppose that we we're given a binomial in the numerator and a binomial in the denominator. Remember, we want to get rid of the one that's in the denominator, meaning the radical in the denominator. So let's use the conjugate from the denominator. We're going to go 3 plus 2 root 6 and 3 plus 2 root 6 because we're going to multiply numerator and numerator or numerator and denominator by the same term. And again, if we divided these two, essentially this would just cancel the 1 because it's the same term over the same term. So it's not that we're changing the numbers of this problem, all, or we're not changing the overall result of this. What we're actually doing is just changing its form. So it will still maintain the same value as its original. We're just trying to change forms so that we get rid of that uh, radical in the denominator. Now, if we expand this, here's what we're going to get. We can think about it as this. And if this helps, what I would do is create brackets around these terms just to be like, hey, we're actually going to use the foiling technique in the numerator to numerator and denominator to denominator. 3 times 3 is 9, root 2. And then we're going to go root 3, or 3 root 2 times 2 root 6. This is going to give us plus 6 root 12. And then we're going to go to our negative 6. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Negative 6 times 2, which is equal to negative 12 root 6. And then this is all divided by, did you see how if these terms aren't the conjugates of each other, we end up getting four terms in the expansion where the two middle terms will not cancel. So we just want to be aware of that. Now that we're going down to the conjugate in the denominator, I'm going to go 3 times 3, which is 9. And then I'm just going to multiply the outside terms. Negative 2 root 6 and positive 2 root 6. This gives me minus 4 times 6 because we get rid of the radical on the root 6 when they multiply together. Now what I'm going to have is when I simplify this, because I can simplify this one step, I'm going to get 9 root 2. Uh, plus 6 times, I'm going to split apart the 12 into 4 and 3, minus 18, minus 12 root 6. And at the same time, what I'm going to do is simplify the denominator. 9 minus 24, 9 minus 24, we should end up getting negative 15 in the denominator. And now from here, we're going to write this as equal to 9 square root of 2, plus 6 times the square root of 4, or 6 times 2 is 12 root 3, and then minus 18 minus 12 root 6. And then here's something you should realize is that if you scan all of the terms here or all the radicals, I can't add anything up. Root 2, root 3, and root 6 are all distinct radicals, so I can't add or subtract those. 18 is a constant, so the best I can do is divide all the terms if possible. Or what I mean by that is if I can divide all the coefficients here by some sort of common term, then I'm going to do that. So let's take all of these coefficients and let's off to the side say, hey, what is the largest number that divides 9, 12, 15, 18, and 12? I would believe that to be negative 3. So if I divide all terms by negative 3, what this is going to allow me to do is reduce it as much as possible. 9 divided by negative 3 is equal to negative 3 root 2. Then we're going to go 12 divided by negative 3 is minus 4 root 3. Negative 18 divided by negative 3 is positive 6. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4 root 6. And then negative 15 divided by negative 3. This is going to end up giving us positive 5. So this is as much as we can do with this. Because they all divide by at least the 3, we're going to do that here. Now, again, 
with this piece, if you didn't get rid of the negative in the denominator, like let's say you only divided by positive three, this would still be correct. But like I tend to see a lot of solutions or I tend to see a lot of um, overall solutions to these types of given problems where the negative has been shifted to the numerator and we just flip all the signs. So as you can see, the things that were positive are now negative in the end and the things that were negative are now positive because of the division by negative three. All right, let's do a couple more examples here. So if I go to my example D here, this one's going to be equal to, we're going to start by multiplying by the conjugate. So let's make sure we do that here. This is going to be two root six. And instead of plus, we're going to put minus four root three. And we do that for numerator and denominator. So four root three. There we go. Let's expand this. Five times two is 10. Three times six is 18. Then we're going to go five root three times negative four root three which is going to be equal to negative 20 times 3. Because they are the same radical with the same index, we can just simplify it to 3. Root 2 times uh, 2 root 6 is the same as plus 2 root 12. And then our root 2 times negative 4 root 3 is going to be negative 4 root 6. When you multiply them, all divided by. Now I'm going to go to the denominator, and because they're the conjugate terms of one another, we can do the outside terms only. So 2 times 2 is 4, root 6 times 6, root 6 is 6. And then we're going to do the outside terms, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, root 3 times root 3 is just simply 3. Now let's simplify this as much as we can. This is going to be 10 times the square root of 9 times 2. We're going to break that one apart. 20 times 3 is equal to negative 60. Uh, 12, 2 root 12 can separate into, uh, let's make this 4 and 3. And then the four, square root of 6 can't split apart anymore, so we leave it as such. Now, this is all divided by 24 minus 16 times 3, where 16 times 3 is equal to 48. So if we take 24 and we minus 48, well, we should just get negative 24. So we're going to substitute that into the denominator here. Now, let's simplify this one step further. Um, if I simplify this one step further, and I, I may just need to get rid of this divisible by 3 term here just for a second, and then I'll rewrite it in after. This is going to be equal to, I'm going to make it 10 times the square root of 9, which is 3. That makes it 30 root 2 minus 60 plus 2 times the square root of 4, which is 2 times 2, which is 4, square root of 3, and then minus 4 root 6 all divided by the negative 24. And then we want to look at this and be like, what do 30, 60, 24, and 4 all divide by? Well, let's just make sure that 60 can divide by 4. I'm pretty sure if we divide 60 by 4, we get 15. So we're going to divide all the terms by at least 4 in this situation. And more importantly, negative 4. When we divide them all by negative 4, if I divide 30 by the 4, I'm going to end up getting 7.5. Ah, it doesn't work for that one. So because if we try and divide them all by at least four, it doesn't work. Maybe if we divide them by two, that might work. So yeah, let's try dividing them by two. 30 divided by two is equal to 15 root two. 30, uh, 60 divided by, oh, and we're going to divide them by negative two as well, just to shift this negative from the denominator here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put divided by negative two right here. And then if I have some room here, I'll also put divided by negative two. And I'm going to do that over on this problem as well. When we divided them, we divided by negative, I think it was 3. And then this one was also divided by negative 3. So we divided them all by negative 3. I just want to make sure we annotate that in for the second solution. So we divided all by negative 2. 15 div or 30 divided by negative 2 is negative 15 square root of 2. And then we had negative 60 divided by negative 2 is positive 30. We then have 4 divided by 2, which is equal to positive, or sorry, negative 2, because we're dividing by negative of 3. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2 root 6. And then we're going to divide this all by 24, or negative 24 divided by negative 2 is positive 12. So that's all we can do, because at this point, we can't divide them all commonly by anything more. They don't all divide by 2, they don't all divide by 3, so therefore this has to be the solution right here. Now, again, you don't have to divide by the negative as well, but sometimes I like to do that just because I don't like to see the negative in the denominator if I don't have to. It's still rational if it's negative, so it's still rationalized, but yeah, just in case. All right, 
Let's go down to example E. So very similar. We're going to multiply by the conjugate. So I'm going to start by looking at the denominator and being like, it's 3 square root 2. But instead of it being a minus 3 root 3, it's going to be a positive 3 root 3. And we're going to do the same thing for the numerator. There we go. Now, in the second step, here's what it's going to be. We have 3 times the square root of 2 times square root of 2. That's equal to 3 times 2. We then go root 2 times 3 root 3, which is equal to positive 3 root 6. Uh, the next term is going to be root 3 times 3 root 2, which is equal to positive 3 root 6. Okay, interesting. We see two root 6s, so that's kind of nice. Root 3 times 3 root 3 is equal to positive 3, but multiplied by 3, because we had the common root with the same index. Now we go to the denominator, and because these are the conjugates here, we're only going to multiply the first terms. So 9 or 3 times 3, root 2 times root 2 is positive 2. And then minus, we go 3 times 3 is 9, root 3 times root 3 is 3. And so now let's just simplify this. This is going to be 6 plus 6 root 6, because we add up the 3 root 6s and 3 root 6s, plus the 9 on the outside, all divided by. From here, we're going to go to uh, 9 times 2 is 18, 18, and maybe we'll just throw that in there just to simplify it. 18 minus 27, which is 3 times 9. From here, I'm going to again then combine my constants. So this is going to become uh, 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 6 root 6, all divided by 18 minus 27, 18 minus 27, giving us negative 9. And then let's divide them all by a common term. So if we realize that they're all divisible by 3, and more importantly, divisible by a negative 3, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to divide both by negative 3, and this is going to end up giving us an answer of, instead of positive 15, 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. Positive 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2, root 6. And then all divided by negative 9 divided by negative 3 is positive 3. And again, you don't have to divide by the negative, but I mean, I just like it as a solution type. And I think it's very common as a solution type that you try to get rid of the negative in the denominator if possible, which means you just flip the signs of everything in the numerator and divide by whatever term you do. Okay, last problem is this one here. So I'm thinking there might be enough room, but we'll try. If we need an extra piece of paper, we'll, we'll bring one open here. So here's the problem, and it's a little bit distinctive in comparison to the other ones. If I have 1 over root 5 minus 1 over root 3, the number one issue is that there's radicals in the denominator. So we're like, okay, let's try and get rid of those as a way to now try and rationalize this. Now, when I try to rationalize this, I'm thinking I want to get rid of the radicals in each of the denominators. So if I want to get rid of each of the radicals in the denominator, what I can do is then I'm going to just multiply by whatever I see in their denominators here. And more in particularly, I want to do an LCM of the, this situation here. So if I want them to be the exact same, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up multiplying them by the opposite term. So here's what I mean by that. If we know that the LCM between 5 and 3, or the lowest common multiple, the first number that both of these reach is 5 times 3, which is 15, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as the following. This is 1 over, I'm going to take the square root of 5, and multiply it by the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3. I'm then going to take this and go minus 1 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. Now the reason I'm doing this is because just like anything, if I want to add terms or subtract terms, I must have a common denominator. And so the fact that it's root 5 and root 3 allows me or doesn't allow me to combine them together. So in this first step, I'm not trying to rationalize the denominator quite yet. I'm trying to make them look the same. So here's what the next step will be. This is going to be equal to 1 or not 1, but root 3 over root 15 minus we're going to take 1 times root 5, which is root 5 divided by root 15. And now that they're both a product of root 15, here's what I can do. I can now combine them as one fraction. So the one fraction that this is going to represent is equal to, we're going to write it as root 3 divided by root 15. And it's going to all be divided by 15, or the root 15. So I'm going to extend this and go minus root 5 divided by all root 15. 
And now this is where I, I could imagine that we needed the extra page here. So um, from here, uh, maybe we're able to fit it on here. So it might just be a little bit condensed, but let's try it out. We're going to rationalize the denominator here. When we rationalize the denominator, we know we need to multiply this by, and maybe I'll show it in red just to differentiate this step. We're going to multiply it by the square root of 15 over the square root of 15. Now, if we want to get rid of that radical in the denominator, by doing so, now let's see if I can do that in the white space off to the left here. This is going to be equal to, when we multiply it into the numerator, root 15 to both these terms, 3 times 15, this is going to give us square root of 45. And maybe I'll actually just show that step here too. So it's going to be 3 times 15, and then that's all under the first radical, minus 5 times 15. 5 times 15 gives us 75. So the second one is going to be 5 times 15, and we'll do that 75 in the next step. All divided by root 15 times root 15 is just 15. Now we want to simplify this as much as possible. So I'm going to rewrite this in probably the best way you could, which is the following. If I have 3 here, what makes 15? 3 times 5. So I'm going to write this as 3 times 5. Minus, in the second radical, I'm going to split apart the 15 even more. This is going to become 5 times 3, or 3 times 5, just like we had before. So maybe we can even just write it in the same order, just so people don't get confused here. 3 times 5 all divided by the 15 that was in the denominator. Now we want to be thinking, what can we take out in front of the square root? Well, if you look at this, we have the following. We have two threes here, and we have one five and two fives. So if you have two of the same factor, you can remove that out as a squared term, because we could even write it like this. So we could write it as equal to the square root of three squared times five, and I'll try and make that a little bit more uh, readable there. I know that's still a little bit tough. And then this one is going to be 5 squared times 3, all divided by 15. Now, this is going to become the following. A final answer, when we remove out the squared term, 3 square rooted is going to be just 3 out front, with the square root of 5 left behind. Our other term is going to be the 5 squared square rooted is 5, leave behind the 3, all divided by the 15 here. There we go. Last thing we want to check for is do all the coefficients reduce? 3, 5, and 15. Unfortunately, no, because 3 and 5 are prime, and they don't all divide by the same thing. So we can't divide them all. Therefore, our final answer is this term here, and we are done. Now, I'm just going to make this as neat as I can here as a solution. There we go. Here's our work. Maybe I'll just do a, a bit of an arrow just to point that we continue down this direction so that you're not confused. And there we go. All right, here's where you want to go into the assignment. So I'm going to give you a handout, or if I don't give you a handout, then the textbook questions are there for you. The other handout is actually directly connected to the notes. So I want you completing all of these problems over the following two pages here, where it's a bunch of practicing using the rationalizing denominator techniques, where it's either a monomial in the denominator, like the first couple examples here, or the first let's say eight examples, and then anything past nine, these shift to where it's a binomial, and you're going to then have to foil these to get them. Now, don't be afraid to use the short form of if you know it's a conjugate, as soon as you have the conjugate, you can just multiply the first and the last terms. All right, good luck with your practice.